Hi everyone, it's been a while since I've uploaded a video and that's because I was extremely busy with vacation. And also because the project I'm working on now takes a little bit longer to build. So let me show you what it is. It's a solar stalker. Just to show you, let's say that this is the sun. So when I pick it up, we always face the light. So I first made this as a proof of concept. Okay, so now you have seen what it can do. Let me now show you how it works. But first let me remove all this wiring so it will be a little more organized. Okay, so it consists of uh, a sensor board, motor control board, two electric motors, which are actually grill rotisserie motors, so they have a big speed reduction, which is ideal in this case, of course. So I broke off this piece, which normally houses the battery, and of course I don't need this anymore, so let's throw that away. Then I've attached two wires and uh, filled it up with hot glue, and after I filled it up with hot glue, I I placed it on a steel plate with a piece of baking paper between it, so now it's nice and smooth. And of course this setup is very flimsy, but that's just temporary. I'm making a very big setup so I can attach large equipment to do all kinds of tests with solar energy. Now the sensor consists of eight photoresistors, as you can see. This photoresistor in the middle is for voltage control, which I will explain later. Because of these pieces of cardboard with which I have covered them, it will always have a shadow on one side. So now there's light shining on this side, with a shadow on that side. And what you see here in the diagram is a Wheatstone bridge. So if these two photoresistors are in the shadow, and the other two are lit by the sun, then you get a difference in resistance between the two and therefore you get a potential difference because on the right side the voltage will increase between the two resistances and on the left side the voltage will decrease between the two resistances and therefore you get a potential difference and the difference I'm using in a motor control board. And then I wired them so that the numbers will correspond with the image as shown here. And therefore you get always the two shadow resistors and the two resistors that are lit by the sun. They are paired to one side. Now the problem is that if there is less light, then of course the difference between the shadow side and the side that's been lit by the sun is less. So therefore you would have less output. And to compensate that, I added a light intensity sensor, which is this sensor in the middle. And what it does is that when there's more light shining on that resistor, then the voltage drops. So that in a variation of light intensity, you will always have more or less the same output. So that if there's a little less light because it's a little cloudy, the motors will still be turned the same speed as when the sun is bright as hell. I connected the sensor to an RS-232 because it has a lot of wires and therefore I could easily connect, disconnect it, which of course makes it easier to work with. Now what this motor control board does is that if the positive side is on this side, then through the diode it will go through this optocoupler 
and this optocoupler will then feed these two transistors. This is the, the transistor for the negative side, this is the transistor for the positive side. These are, by the way, Darlington transistors. I didn't draw Darlington transistors in my diagram because it take up too much space. I use TFP121 transistors because they can handle a lot and they're very cheap. And when the positive side is on this side, it will go through this side to the diode, through the optocoupler, and therefore power these transistors, which will make the polarity change. And this one is just the same, but just for the other channel. The light intensity sensor is connected to this transistor and is just dropping the voltage when the amount of light increases. And it uh, drops the voltage for the whole system, so the whole system will respond equally to the amount of light. Okay, as I was filming, the voltage control transistor uh, burnt out from the light intensity sensor. And because it got way too hot, because I didn't have a heat sink attached to it. And because it's very hard to remove it here, I, and I now attach these wires with these connectors. So I can easily remove it if it goes again. And now I've attached this heat sink, so it uh, won't get as hot. So hopefully it will keep working this way. So I've now applied my multimeter, so you can see the voltage drop. We're going to shine a light on the light intensity sensor. So 25 volts. You see 17 volts now. If there's more light on it, it goes to 6 volts. These pieces of cardboard, which create a shadow, are of course temporary. I made them from cardboard so I can change the accuracy. Because if the shadows are too wide, then you will have a lot of hysteresis. So it will juggle between two positions if you move your light from one side to the other. Because then you would first have a moment where the shadows would move and then there will be light on that side. And then it corrects. And if you then move back, then it will take a while before the light hits this side. And therefore it will be a little less accurate. So this way when it's cardboard I can still tweak that a little. So it's a very simple, a completely analog system. So for the sturdy setup that I'm building, I'm going to use this bicycle axle. Mm -hmm. So I can mount a lot of heavier solar energy experiments. Okay, that's it everyone. If you want to see the rest of this project, then please like, share and subscribe. Check me out on Facebook and Instagram and see you next time.